So from time to time, we hear about different initiatives, right, that the leagues are putting forth. It may be because they want to expand or grow the league or the fan base for a particular sport, as we were seeing in the NFL and NBA. We just, of course, heard most recently about the Hawks playing the Magic in November in Mexico City. And of course, we know that the Falcons will be headed back to back abroad or across the pond to take on the Jack Jacksonville Jaguars. But there are some other initiatives that oftentimes will touch on the growth of a sport, whether that is fan base or athlete here domestically. And that's what's happening in major league baseball. You know, a lot of sports also talk about diversity and evolution. And it seems like MLB is yeah. really, really trying to embrace that. And a lot of it is starting right here. So we all know, of course, Kenyon Drake, the seven-year NFL veteran, played at Alabama, now plays with the Dolphins. And he's a guy who chose the football path, but his little brother actually chose a different path. Isaiah Drake decided, hey, in about eighth grade, you know, he's kind of um, on the East Cobb 13 U Astros when he was about 11 and he starts playing and he's kind of good at baseball and he figures, you know what, I might want to say start taking this seriously. And that turned out to be a good look for not just him, but for so many other players. And what excited me about this article that you shared, Jarvis, was the fact that this is indicative of a wave of young African-American talent that's returning to Major League Baseball. And why do we say it that way? Because you do see players of color but oftentimes those players of color are from the Caribbean. They're from South America. They're not actually African-American, meaning black people of U.S. descent. So the mm -hmm. game had really taken a hit over the last couple of decades, but the league is putting forth the possibility of a resurgence. And that starts with Tony Reagan's, of course, he was a, a GM with the Angels. He's now baseball's chief baseball development officer. And he said, quote, you're starting to see that around the country, whether it be here in Florida, where the Hank Aaron Invitational Camp is taking place, or in Atlanta, Chicago, Detroit, or California, there's a steady uptick in participation. And Jarvis, you got to be excited when you know that 44 of the best players are going to be right here in Atlanta at Truist Park for the showcase game. And that a number of those players, I mentioned, of course, Isaiah Drake, but we're also talking about a, I'm going to call it a bloodline, if you will, that includes Ty Pete from Trinity Christian, Sharpsburg, just outside of Atlanta, Tamar Johnson, and of course, the one and only Michael Harris II, which that was started, his interest started with one of the Hayward boys. So how exciting mm -hmm. is it that, we, you know, we call this place Chocolate City, right? Oh, you know that. Chocolate yeah. City is starting the resurgence of African-American players into Major League Baseball. Yeah, like that is it's just dope. Like, because yeah. when when you think about like the connections, right? Because um Isaiah talked about how he was on the opposite he, the opposing team when when um, um Stockbridge High School retired Michael Harris's jersey. Yeah. And he just just sitting there, he was like, Man, this dude, like literally not too long, I think it was like two years out of high school, you know, before they actually did it. So it was kind of like, oh man, this is crazy. Like, and it just goes to show you T like how how big it is to see people in a sport that look like you. Like, yeah. how, uh, you know, that representation matters. It is it so important. I, I even go back to when I was, uh, when I was coming up and, and getting into sports and everything like that. Like I said, a lot of people don't know this. And I've talked about it on the show before. Yeah. Like my first sport was, was baseball. Mm -hmm. Like, and that was my first love, like literally. And we just talking about Fred McGriff, the crime dog. He was a big inspiration because guess yeah. why? Because he looked like me, you know, yeah. he ended up being the same height as I ended up being, you know what I'm saying? So it's just so many things that kind of go into when you see guys that look like you out there playing and, and for Isaiah Drake to be able to say, you know what? I see a, a young brother out here doing his thing. He getting his jersey retired. Like he about to get ready to go into the major, the major leagues. And this is just a, a super, super dope initiative because I know a lot of people, you know, and talking to some of my guys who who um, cover baseball, you know, who are brothers, and they was a little sketchy at first. They was like, yeah. oh, okay, you know, because you know how it is when you're talking about diversity, equity, and inclusion, you know, how that can kind of wane some, and then mm -hmm. it'll just disappear, then it'll pop back up again. So yeah. for them to actually say, hey, here's what we're trying to do, and and it it, it helps that it, you know, they uh 
that they, they are making some noise in the city of Atlanta because we know Atlanta is just different all over in the United yeah. States. So for True. them to be able to go through that with their word and you starting to see some 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 real like uptick, like you mm-hmm. seeing some guys like uh, Tamar Johnson coming yeah. out of Benjamin E. Mays High School, yes. team, the fourth yes. overall pick in the overall overall pick in the uh, in the major B- baseball draft. So mm-hmm. that's the type of stuff that you feel like. When you think, when you hear the major league baseball say, "Hey, we want to we want to make a difference. We want to get this back because we're, we're looking at what just a little bit under seven percent of players in major leagues are you know African American." When back in those nineties, when I was talking about when I fell in love with the game, mm-hmm. you were looking at like 24 percent. Yeah. Like that's a big drop, and I'm so glad that it's starting to um, trickle back up. The up it's on the up. It's back on the up and up. Right. And you mentioned how we're not talking about players just being in the majors or players who are just drafted. But we're talking about, like you said, players who are drafted high. The Twins took Omari Daniel, a shortstop from Smyrna. They took him in the 14th round and then uh, the Walker School. um, And he was there as well. But the outfielder, Christian Jackson, they took him in the 19th round. Now, here's where that uptick comes, however. When you start looking at the first round of the past 10 drafts, that's where the numbers change a little bit, because although those are later rounds, when you look at it overall, 19 percent of the players selected in the first round the last decade, they were black and U.S. born. And not only that, Michael Harris, the second, of course, was the NL rookie of the year for 2022. But then you go back just two years And Kyle Lewis and Devin Williams were also AL and NL rookies of the year, respectively. Right. So when you think about the fact that that had not been done since 1984, when you're talking about Dwight Gooden, of course, with the Mets and then another Mariner, right. Alvin Mm -hmm. Davis with um, with Seattle. That's when, you know, that shows an uptick because you're literally talking about a sweep in 2020 and then two years later michael harris the second gets that and we talked about how difficult it is for an outfielder to be able to one up a pitcher and yet yes. he out he outdueled his his fellow brave in spencer strider so i think that's also positive as well like not just that players are getting back into it but when you start to see that quality there and we know jarvis you know because you played football in the state of Georgia, that this is a hotbed. It's considered a hotbed for football, right? Right. We witnessed it Wednesday when 77 teams came together for the first ever, at least to our knowledge, high school media day that was attended by all the teams that won titles in 2022 here in the state of Georgia. And Huddle came all the way from Texas to actually broadcast it. But we also say on this show all the time, don't sleep on this state as a hotbed for basketball and now it's showing to be a hotbed for baseball absolutely i wholeheartedly agree and and when you think about like the the whole process of baseball because i think in you think like you know god want the notoriety right you know isaiah was drawn to you know his jersey being retired and all that stuff you know nowadays t teams are calling these players up like you're no longer hey you got to go once you draft this 17 18 years old you got to play six years in the major leagues before you even get considered like now we see we've seen it live and local here in atlanta Mm -hmm. if if you ready they're gonna call you up because michael harris didn't even play in triple a he he came straight from double a so you know they are you know and then special strider coming up as well you know like being being drafted, you know, uh, two years and then two years in, you're getting that call up. You don't have to yes. necessarily be uh, go out there and play five and six years and worry about contract uh, issues as to why you're not coming up. If you're good enough, they're going to call your butt up and you're going to get a chance to play. And that, and, that, and I think that's yes. the cool part. That's another draw as well because, like, we know that, you know, back in the day, you're just like, mm-hmm. man, we gotta, I got to play how long before I start getting right. paid for real money? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And you make a great point about the fact that if you're good, they will find you. And another thing that Reagan said was the fact that a ton of these players, if they're not going straight to the majors, they're committed to D1 schools. Some are from HBCUs. We know that there was even an HBCU showcase that was recently broadcast on MLB Network, we think that's critical too. But going back to the point before we move on, not to minimize the impact that a Michael Harris II has as far as making sure that players see, not just is this a lucrative sport, but it's fun to play. 
Michael yeah, Harris exactly. II is a joy to watch, just like the rest of the Braves. Like, I feel like the franchise and the club are taking on his identity and his personality, just like they are Ronald Acuna Jr. and Ozzy Albies. That's also the thing that you have to see that makes a niche sport fun, just like we saw Steph Curry do every basketball move known to man when he got that hole in one, ran yes. down, you know, because he'd run down the court if he hit that kind of three, ran down the golf course and you know, fell flat on the golf course and literally the fairway, they went wild. Right. Yeah. And so I think that when players also see all of those things come together, you got the skills, there are hundreds and hundreds of scouts who are coming out to see you. You also play the game with joy and that's starting to be embraced. Yes. And you see Finally. that it's just as lucrative, if not more lucrative than the other three major sports uh, NHL, they have guaranteed contracts as well. Uh, NBA, of course, has them guaranteed. And the NFL is starting to get more that are guaranteed. But you see baseball? Oh, they're all guaranteed. Like baseball contracts? Yeah. yeah. You, you get, get the money every dollar. in the bag <laughs> is the bag is the bag. So, yeah, love to see it. Love to see it. And, of course, we are hoping that we can tell you we love to see what the Braves did and kind of re- set themselves coming back home to play the Brewers this weekend. Kicking it off tonight is Yanni Chirinos, who, of course, was claimed off waivers just last Sunday. We know Bryce Elder is going to be on the bump tomorrow. Yet to be determined on Sunday, but Jarvis, I have a sneaking suspicion that might just mean that somebody who was down in AAA or somebody who had a final rehab assignment might just show up on Sunday. Whatever the case, every day is, we will talk about it on Monday. But before that, you guys know what to do. Drop some notes in the chat about what you think about this reemergence and renaissance of black players in the game of baseball. And of course, after you check us out on YouTube, if you're driving around in the city, you might as well download ATL Day Ones wherever you get your podcasts so that you can listen to the great things we got to say on this show.